I could throw all the science in the world at you, and you might say to yourself on this website, I've made a bloody good attempt at doing that. I could give you all the intellectual arguments as to why we need to take control of our own state of mind. But none of those arguments or scientific evidence will make a blind bit of difference to you until it becomes personal. In fact, until it becomes personal, having this knowledge and not doing anything about it may actually make us even more agitated than we actually normally are as normal crazy people. A client recently told me that having gone through a one-day workshop with me, everything only began to make real sense to her as she subsequently worked through some of the online resources on this website and they became personal knowledge to her. She said to me that, for example, rather than watching a video or reading an article that said, as ordinary people we have 70,000 thoughts rattling through our head every day, things really began to make sense to her personally when she got out a book and a pen and hand wrote, I have 70,000 useless thoughts running through my head every day. I categorize everything that I perceive. I can only perceive what I expect to perceive. In various different places on this website I talk about the importance of handwriting. Normally I talk about it within the context of goal setting, but obviously there's a vast amount of research in relation to the extent to which handwriting, anything that you're trying to learn, internalizes it, makes it personal, and enables us to evaluate it and get it back out, should we, for example, need to do that in, say, an exam. This is a classic example of the impact of handwriting. Everything that we talk about here on this website, everything that I talk about with my clients, though based in hard science, only begins to make a difference when I understand the difference it can personally make to me. Personally make to me in my work, in my rest, in my play, in my work, and life. Therefore, as I am suggesting to a number of people with whom I'm working at the moment, buy yourself a little book, a nice little book in which you can keep a few notes. Start handwriting about what mindfulness means to you, what the practice of mindfulness means to you, what the science of mindfulness means to you, and how bringing these understandings into your life what mindfulness can do for somebody like you with a purpose in life. So that through mindfulness on the one hand, and the purpose that our goals and objectives give us, we can move effortlessly towards the kind of life that we really and truly want to have in an ideal world.